I'd like to start with a little, a little ideation, a little role playing. And imagine that you're maybe traveling interstate for work and are arriving really late. Perhaps you missed a flight, perhaps the flight was delayed. The taxi's just dropped you off to the hotel. All you want to do is sleep and you walk in the room and it looks something like this. Really, all you really want to do is sleep, but you just think, I can't. I just can't bring myself to comfortably sleep here. This just isn't right. Now, in the, in the days past, you had a couple of options. You could call downstairs to reception and say, this really sucks. Or you could maybe wander downstairs to reception, but clearly if they have a room like that in their hotel, you're not going to get too much of a reaction. But as we all know, and as we undoubtedly all do at various stages for different services, we now have a very different option. And this is an example that a friend of mine pulled out some time back, which I, 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 love, I love relating to. And this is a, a real review of a hotel. I think I can feel death creeping up on me as I write this. It's so gross, like something in a horror movie. I'm about to walk out to my car to get my own blankets because this bed is so gross. I don't even want to imagine how many people are brought here to be murdered. Do not stay here. My wife and I are going to go get tested for HIV because of this bed. And most importantly, the Wi-Fi blows. Who's used Uber? Okay, so Uber, which, um, you know, very convenient, very global service these days. Its fundamental guiding principle is this rating model. If you are a driver, so bear this in mind when you're rating drivers on Uber, if you're a driver who consistently gets a four, you will, you'll be kicked off the, off the roster. What you may not be aware of is that you as a user are also by, rated by the drivers each time. And the decision can be made where you mysteriously will never find an Uber ready to pick you up because you are ranked poorly by the drivers. How many people have looked for doctors? in an area they can't. So these sort of rating sites, two million doctors globally are rated on RateMD, including all, all the, pretty much every um, GP in, in Canberra. If you're looking for a job, then pretty much every major employer in the region if, is rated by people who may not be able to spell particularly well, <laughs> but enjoy going, having time off to pick up their kids, or perhaps Working at the Department of Health has destroyed my mental health. <laughs> the transparency of these things. There's another, there's another whole category of this sort of stuff, which is actually called quit porn, which is people videoing themselves celebrating the fact that they're about to leave this company, which is moronic and horrible and destroying their mental health. All of this has come about, this incredible rush to visibility, to transparency, to a very different way of evolving has really been driven by this slow burn shift from the internet and everything that's come since. Now, the internet is far from new, but the rate of change and the rate of societal impact that it's now having is far greater. The speed of that change is far greater than it's ever been before. In our space, the power in all of this has shifted totally from the traditional publishing environment, the tra traditional media relationships, that power has shifted to the audience. And I'll show you that animation again because it costs a lot of money to develop. <laughs> now, for the people who were traditional media players, as the internet has grown immeasurably year on year on year, the rush from the traditional medium into this new space has obviously been the, the new Wild West. But in the, in the fight to continue to remain relevant to an audience, to have a voice, to have a disintermediating role between the advertiser and the audience. These media companies are not only competing against each other, their non-traditional media competitors, but also against anyone else who now understands that they can speak directly with that same audience. Whether that's insurance companies, sports drinks, hospitals, any sort of company, any sort of entity, whether they're talking to consumers or business audiences, this is a, a fight for an audience. 
as people move through, and everyone's got a different model about how you communicate with an audience and how you first derive attention, perhaps, and then educate people over time and help to sway them to a particular perspective or point of view. But the way people discover this information now is not through traditional media channels to the same extent, but much more likely to be through search engines and increasingly through what we call social media. And if you take a traditional model of owned, earned and paid media, owned traditionally being your own websites perhaps, uh, rented is another term that's often used for that layer of social channels, so Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Earned media is really the area where a huge amount of focus is going on in this marketplace right now because the alternative to going out and actually paying to acquire and build that audience can also be how can you leverage your existing assets and social channels to actually earn coverage. How can you, and this is where PR and traditional comms really has a, a lot of interplay with the content marketing model. The role of influencers, the role of employees, the role of partners, the role of clients. How can you get these groups motivated, involved in creation, co-creation of content such that they are so enthused and motivated and bought into the experience that they will go out and propagate it and get that amplification power for you. <laughs>